You're listening to iCannabisRadio.com. For my blinded with science, and I'm blinded right now. <laughs> I mean, totally. <laughs> and our special me. guest, David Madalena, <laughs> Madalena, Lena, Mad- you- Madalena, Madalena. <laughs> But you were close. Wow. You were very close. I know how to say it. I'm you, just having a little know, freak out I right know. now. No, but you're supposed to say it like you know, like you're Italian. So you Mad- go, Madalena. Madalena. Yeah, it just rolls oh, there off the you tongue. Go. Yeah, doesn't that? Yeah. That's much better. I love that name. Thank you. Anyway, so Jill, as we all know, uh, is not the host anymore. Oh, she left you. Oh, she left me. I know. Mm, I love Jill, though. I love Jill, and uh, she just is super busy. I mean, everybody, you know, wants her compliance help, so I totally get it. So Tamar agreed to be <laughs> my science host now. I'm outbeaten with science by Tamar. Mm -hmm. So welcome, Tamar. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. Woo! (laughs) I'm so excited. Yes. So we're going to be digging in uh, deeper to more science-related issues now. Um, So, But I thought we would start off June with David. Well, hello. And hemp. And hemp. Thanks for having me on. It's kind of nice to be the guest. There's a little less (laughs) pressure. I know, huh? I'm hanging out here, so... Um, yeah, so what do you want to know about him? You know, I want to know a lot of things about him. Everything. Yeah. everything. Well, first of all, tell us about yourself, David, your show, what okay. you do, and all that stuff. Well, I'm the um, co founder of the Hemp Connoisseur magazine, as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been out for, it'll be almost two years. I know. Um, it's actually two years this month. Just about this day, actually, is beginning of really? June, that the concept of the Hemp Connoisseur okay. was created. Um, and then we went out and sold uh, all the dispensaries and everybody on this idea of a new kind of magazine that actually focused on all of the cannabis plant, be it uh, the medical side or the industrial side on the hemp side, uh, on for hemp. And we sold them on that idea for quite a few months. It took time to build up and get enough advertisers who I could pretty much convince sure. and beg to get in. Well, because a new magazine. People new are magazine. so skeptical. And people had been yeah. burnt by a lot of the magazines in the past. And Kush. Been, you know, I mean, Kush. Um, you know, you said I didn't. But, um, right. and so we, you know, I, I say it was akin to going in, um, like when you're on a first date with a girl or a guy, but usually I'm saying it from a guy's perspective, so from, yes. with a girl, you're having to like combat every idiot guy that that woman <laughs> has ever dated. That's the same for us. Yeah. That's a good analogy. Sweetie pie. Yeah. So, yeah. well, that's what I'm saying, from a guy's perspective. <laughs> right. No, um, and true. so we had to tell everybody, no, we're not like the other magazines. We're, we're going to oh, treat right. you different. We're going to do this differently. And it took about a year. Um, for everybody to really go, oh, wow, you guys were telling us the truth. You are being your word. You're really presenting this industry in a much higher uh, light. You know, you're not objectifying women to sell medicine. Um, You're actually trying to, you know, mainstream cannabis as opposed to keep it in this counterculture mode. Now that it's legal, we figured it's mainstream. We should make it that way. And so that was kind of the design of the Hemp Connoisseur and how it started. That is fantastic. And then the first issue came out later that year in... Came in November, November. actually, the first week of November. Yeah. Yeah. Because Dave, uh, they moved in right across from when we, basically, we, God, I think we moved in almost at the same time. I think we, we did. You were there like a month or so like before. September. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we had moved in with our other company at the time, Nexus Meds. Mm-hmm. And, um... It's so cool. So we all moved in at the same time, mm-hmm. and now here we are. It's here we are, crazy. Both, both hosts at iCannabis Radio. I it's know. a great little home. You know, I love this community of all the hosts that we have here. So it's kind of fun that we just were, what, we were just, you know, talking at an NCIA event last week, and I was like, Jen, we need to, like, cross-promote. I need people to know about you and your show on our show, and then, and you know, Right. Obviously, shamelessly selling myself to be on your show. So. <laughs> and there you have it. Yeah. Okay, so Ham Connoisseur came out, and mm-hmm. then 
interesting enough, Kush pretty much ended a few months. <laughs> very well, conveniently. Very conveniently. Um, six actually, months it was later it was something. Kush pretty much ended in Colorado about a year ago this month. Um, I think it was. Was it? It was May or June of last year that their last issue came out. But it started to kind of. It was crumble. already dwindling. Well, yeah. it started to crumble when they changed the quality of their magazine, but didn't change the price. Yeah, and that's a big no no. Going know. from color to black well, and, and they, white. Yeah, they didn't to tell their. They didn't <laughs> yeah, tell their they advertisers. They didn't tell them, and all of a sudden, the advertisers were like, "What the heck is this?" Yeah, that you was know? that was that was really bad. Bad move. Bad move. But, yeah, you know that was one of the things that we had to fight with as well. You know, sure. So, well, no, we're never going to do that. You know? Right. Um, but yeah, it's been working out well. We were voted best um, cannabis publication in December by the Cannabis Business Awards, and you know that's pretty good for only being around for pretty much a year at that time. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, it's been developing, and we're building a larger and larger fan base. We're starting a subscription program this next issue. And that's great. Relaunching or reannouncing um, the uh, Hemp Connoisseur Championship this fall. Yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> I the know. second annual, and the, second the annual. trophies were so beautiful. Emerald <laughs> green. The Emerald Towers, we call. Emerald Towers, yeah. yeah, you're gonna have a hard time, hard time beating that. Well, we're gonna, gonna we're, we're gonna stick with those okay. because we want that to become sure. like kind of the name brand trophy, and people like brag about, hey, sure. how many Emerald Towers do you have? Totally, you know? yeah, yeah. So um, that makes sense. Yeah, so we're gonna stick with those because they're awesome, and you know the company we work with, they make some of the highest quality trophies in the in the country, and so we we figured let's everything we want to do, we want to do upscale. And so we said, let's do it that way. You know, let's That's not great. get some plastic trophy. And, right. You know. Totally cheesy. Yeah. We wanted bragging rights. Now, last year, how many categories and how many judges did you have on that? Okay. Contest? I got to think about that for a second. Four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> we had like eight to nine categories, like eight categories last year. Okay. Eight, you know, and, and some of them were small, like the CBD category. Right. Which is going to be hopefully larger. This I, year. I'm really hoping to see it get mm-hmm. larger, but we only had like three entries for the CBD category of the flower and on the oil side. Um, and then we didn't even have a CBD edible. So this time I'm expanding the categories. I'm subdividing concentrates, which is all under one. So we're looking at about 13 categories this time. Um, and I already have people interested in it right after, um, oh, yeah. right after the high that. times cut, people were calling us up. Um, <laughs> Imagine and, that. yeah. And, um, and that's actually how it started, by the way, it was after the high right. times cup. I Thanks remember. high times for making people angry, I guess. But, um, <laughs> but no, people came to me and I would already been, you know, we had already talked about this remember right. when we were in the yeah. same little dormitory office. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'd said, I want to do this, but I want to do it differently and I'm redesigning it. And. And I had already had this kind of map in my head about how I wanted to do it. And then I got like three fo- phone calls the Monday after the High Times Cup. And they were like, can you please do this? Okay. And and, they, and like all these guys were like, it was funny because one of the people that were saying it were like, well, you need to do it at the Exto Center. We got to get this and this and this. And you're going to get all the boosts and everything. And I looked at him and I was like, wait a minute. You just spent all the 15 minute rant on, on why you what? hated right. the cup. And now you want me to do the and same And now thing. you want me to do the exact same thing. And I was like, okay, thank you for the input. But um, if I need any, if I have any questions, I'll be happy to talk to you guys. Right. But we're going to do this on our own. Remember, and, and then we we're thinking about you were thinking about Red Rocks. We were thinking about Red Rocks. Where that Red Rocks is down the line. That's um, something we're looking at for next year. So we're going to do we're going to do a. Uh, well, yeah. that's something that's not been announced. Yet, yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, so you probably want to announce yeah, it on yeah. your show. Yeah. Well, no, no. It's, uh, we'll announce it it's when kidding. it's ready to be announced. It's right. nothing's in solid. We haven't, you know, I haven't called up Red Rocks and you know reserved anything for next year yet. Right. Um, we're kind of in a interesting stage right now between both of my companies. Right. Um, having them kind of work together to uh, build momentum. You know. Together, basically. Right. So, um, so we're going to do a lot of co-branding with that, and uh, we are going to try to get really infused into the um, the grassroots music scene here in Colorado and build up from there. That's great. Yeah. Well, I want um, you got to get some posters out ASAP so we can start. Did, oh yeah. Has yeah. Chris, Christiana already worked? She's on already the been graphics? working on the graphics. <laughs> we will be getting the graphics done yeah. uh, very soon. So we will yep. be having it out there. Because yeah. then we'll be hanging those out at Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the Hemp Connoisseur Championship, patients are going to be able to, I mean, you know, again, we had 135 
patient judges last year. We expect to increase that number of patients. Of course, I gave first right of refusal to the patients that submitted their votes. So I'll be on contact. Time. Yes, on time. So I will that be contact. Yes, that was that's, that's so hard. <laughs> but you know what's so great? Everything was very professional. I know Dave probably got a few gray hairs, but um, everything was totally professional, <laughs> yes. totally anonymous. And what I loved about it the most was the edibles had to all be the same milligrams. Mm. Yes. Wow, that yes. makes sense. And you're penalized whether you went over or under. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, and that's the point. We actually, Dixie entered Absolutely. the yes, CBD. Yes, you did. Yeah. You yeah. did yeah. enter the CBD one. Um, yeah, and um, we gave you guys a special award for that one we, because we nobody, it, it was, it was yeah. you know, because nobody else was really competing on the CBD. Mm -hmm. So, we, But we were like, God, you guys have such a great product. What you've It's revolutionary. So we had to give you a special award because it wasn't fair to give you a winning CBD when you weren't competing against right. anybody else, but it definitely <laughs> needed recognition. I'm excited and for this year. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. to see how many <laughs> entries we have for this year. Like I said, now we have 13 categories by subdividing the concentrates. We subdivided in edibles. Okay. So now we're going to have a savory category. For, oh, cool. We're going to have a sweet category. That's a great. That's great. Yeah. Then we'll have the CBD edible category. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have a... Um, Capsule sublingual category, ca capsule slash sublingual category. Ooh, so would that be tincture? Tinctures, tinctures and capsules, basically. Tinctures and capsules. Yeah, anything like that. All right, and yeah. any special stuff that comes out maybe before that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying anything, mm -hmm. but um, well, and we also actually a very important thing. I think a very important thing to mention on this is what was really important was one third of the rating system was based on the uh, testing of the products. And like you said, on the yeah. edible mm -hmm. side, you lost points if you were over or under because yeah. accuracy to us was the most Absolutely. important aspect of edibles mm -hmm. and testing. Right. Um, but the same thing for THC content and overall cannabinoids. It, it's really important to know you know what you're getting. Well, check this out. So this is very exciting. Yeah. Can Labs is uh, adding four more cannabinoids. Really? So Yay. which ones are you adding? THCV, Excellent. which is going to be my dream come true because I really <laughs> want somebody to make a product that does not make me eat the house down, and that's THCV. Because that's an appetite suppressant. It's an appetite I'm suppressant. On it, Jen. Yeah. Thank you. So that CBD. V, okay. um, CBC, and CBG. No, I, I've never heard of CBDV. What, yeah, what is neither CBDV? have I. Well, we need to look. We, we need to look more into that. What do you know about CBDV? Well, it's you? it's similar. It has a similar um, end group to THCV. Mm -hmm. So tetrahydrocannabivarian is the THCBV. Excuse me, and CBDV is just cannabidiol variant. So they're both very antioxidant. As Jen was saying, THCV is kind of the opposite of THC's effect on ghrelin, which makes you hungry. Mm -hmm. um, wow. CBDV kind of works similarly to CBD. Um, it also is a appetite uh, suppressant. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so the variant. THCV and CBDV. Very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. exciting. So, cool. you know. We will be throwing those in for your test, so maybe somebody might have a bit a strain right. with a lot of those, and then nice we could know. start breeding for some other cannabinoids. Be How cool yes. would that be? How cool is cannabis, first of all? How I mean, cool? I mean, I mean, <laughs> and you know, I, and I, I should say when I say cannabis, I'm talking about hemp and absolutely and the marijuana side, uh, but. It's like it's insane to think that there's this one plant that varies right. from strain to strain, but they all work so well. You know, just depending on what you need, it's 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 pretty incredible. I mean, like, I don't think you can say the same thing about tomatoes or anything. I mean, no, you know, I'm I pretty, mean, they taste different. Much. There's all these different sizes and shapes. Some right. may have more vitamin <laughs> so D or something. Yeah, some <laughs> but, are juicier, but right. yeah, I mean, it's crazy. It's incredible. And I was yeah. over the weekend. At, uh, we were at the People's Fair on Sunday with Realm of Caring. Mm -hmm. They had a booth there, which was great. Um, and I had my band on. So little Landon um, got on board in January. He has leukemia. Mm -hmm. He's three, I believe. Cutest little bundle of love. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So they started um, incorporating uh, cannabis oil. They're from Utah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's, started that's in, tough. That's <sighs> tough. Yeah, they're probably going to be moving here because yeah. the mother said that once they come out, they're going to be on CNN too. Yep. That uh, the community will probably oh, really yeah. freak out. So they want to be moved here before that happens. Sure. Plus, it doesn't make sense that they're there anyway. I mean, her mom's there, but mm -hmm. 
this little boy has gone through I don't I can't even start with what he's been through and what just this simple plant is doing for him I mean he's half of his normal size and the only reason he's half is because it, cannabis has made him hungry wow. and he mm -hmm. eats I mean yeah they just dwindle away they're not That's hungry crazy. but anyway we got to go to break and mm -hmm. we'll be right back Counterpunch is a delicious and effective medical marijuana beverage proudly made right here in Colorado. Each bottle is freshly infused with 100% pure flower extract from the highest grade marijuana plants available today. Using proprietary extraction methods, every bottle of Counterpunch is consistently and reliably infused with an exact milligram dosage that you can count on to relieve your symptoms each and every time. Counterpunch is delicious. There's never any medicine-y taste. We use only 100% cannabis flowers, no trim or our byproducts are ever used in Counterpunch. It does not require refrigeration and comes in convenient, resealable, multi-dose bottles from 60 milligrams to 200 milligrams. We have drinks with dosage that works best for you. Counterpunch is available in a variety of delicious flavors like black cherry, watermelon, pineapple mango, and blue raspberry. And we now have strain-specific beverages available just for you. Counterpunch is delicious, convenient, consistent, and effective. Give it a try and experience the Counterpunch difference. Call Canister at 1-800-420-5757 for all your insurance needs. Canister understands the risks you face each day and we are there to protect your business and your investment. Since 2010, Canister has been serving the cannabis industry nationwide. Call Canister at 1-800-420-5757 or visit us on the web at canister.com to learn more about our insurance and risk management services. Proud member of the NCIA. I'm Gary Johnson, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio, and I want to say, talk it up, Colorado. So anyway, uh, the realm of caring is fabulous. I try to talk to, talk about it as much as possible. Um, I believe, though, they are on a CBD wait list. Really? Yeah. Um, they have now two greenhouses, and they are donating all of their CBD strains, and they're, yeah, it's incredible. It's blowing up. Wow. That's awesome. Um, which is it's just crazy because you think of what uh, you could charge for CBD oil. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, mm -hmm. uh, just like CO2 oil was, I mean, $70, $80 a gram. Mm -hmm. um, and they're $2, I think, because you wow. can't donate it because it's against the law yeah, exactly. right now. But yeah. yeah crazy. So, um, but being around kids that, like Paige's daughter, Charlotte, you know, with Dravet's, she is just Dora the Explorer. Like mm -hmm. she, cause she has been so sick so much that she is off, like just, just blindly yeah, running around so and um, like a little baby would do. Cause right. she, she's now like in the baby stage. It's crazy. How old is she? she must be seven or seven. eight and she has a twin sister. Wow. And you can see the complete differences. And you know, you don't know if it's from the pharmaceutical drugs. You don't know if it's from the actual disease. You just don't know. I mean, but there's very different. Like it, her face is kind of sunk a little bit. Mm -hmm. Her mom was talking about. But um, anyway, it makes you really appreciate uh, things. I saw the first man with elephantitis. He stopped by the booth. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was in it was. I mean, all you've seen is all I've seen is online pictures with a large tumor. He mm -hmm. had tumors everywhere. Like all mm -hmm. over him, some some were very big, some mm -hmm. were smaller. Um, but we talked to him, so it was very funny though because well, not funny, but um, people are scared, you know. They they and kids and cannabis is pushing it, obviously. It is, but mm -hmm. I think that's what's great about CBDs mm -hmm. is now. I mean, look, I mean, we're giving kids Ritalin. I mean, why? I mean, it's basically meth. Oh my God, and Adderall. That's what yeah. I said yeah. online. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's but that's okay because it comes from your pharmacist. But right. see, and you and you bring up pharmaceuticals, and with children, the developmental science is completely different than adult mm -hmm. pharmaceuticals. Yes. When your system is building, you know, you're creating your neurological system, your endocrine immunity system, and you're adding pharmaceutical drugs that your body can't 
tell that it's something that's external. So mm-hmm. it's incorporating that into the changes it's making. That makes sense. So some oh of the t- statistics are showing after, I think it's the fifth pharmaceutical, the fifth different type of pharmaceutical drug, the efficacy of any pharmaceutical drug you add on to that regimen is 0.002%. I mean, there are some kids that are upwards of 10 plus. So my question is, Western healing, you're supposed to do no harm. Throwing more pharmaceuticals over and over again when you know they're not going to work is a bit ridiculous. Whereas this plant substance, it becomes a part of your natural system, your endocannabinoid Mm -hmm. system. And it helps regulate and repair. And it's a genetic transcription factor. It can change your genes, but it's natural. Mm-hmm. and safe and non-toxic. So, I mean, it's and as I'm very passionate about anti-pharmaceuticals because I was right. in med school and I think it's poison. I think we're going to look back mm-hmm. at chemotherapy in in 100 years and say we were poisoning ourselves. Well, we actually already know that chemotherapy is poison. That by the definition mm-hmm. you are poisoning your right. system. You're just hoping that that poison kills the cancer before right. it kills before you. Before it kills you. your human yeah. cells, right? It's, that it, is scary. Well, Landon's yeah. mom, so this little boy He's going through chemo and the doctors and, and they're adding cannabis in, but they're not telling the doctors this, right? Because they, a lot of doctors will cut your, your treatment if they know. So they're not telling him and the doctors are astonished. What are you doing? You know, cause all of his cells are repairing, mm-hmm. like they can see it right there. And, um, and they basically told her, you know what, um, you know, your son is good with the cancer, but it's probably the treatment that would kill him now. Mm-hmm. They literally said that. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's it's interesting that you say that the pharmaceutical or whatever regimen they're using is working better because actually CBD, one of its main effects is it it affects the drug metabolism of your liver. And so if you're co-administering CBD with any other pharmaceutical drug, you're actually increasing and potentiating the effects of that pharmaceutical mm-hmm. drug. This is also why um, if you're trying to get off a hard drug f- for anti-addiction, you know, opiates, adding cannabinoids, specifically CBD, mm-hmm. will help you lower your opiate level mm-hmm. to the point of where all you need is the cannabinoid. Yeah, we talked about this actually on our show, and, and, and we had we had a guest on, and we were talked about it, and they were like, you know, actually, marijuana is the gateway drug. Mm-hmm. It's the gateway away from drug addiction mm-hmm. by, by utilize, you know, utilizing cannabidiol. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing what we're discovering without a bunch of like labs testing it. Right. We're, we're, we're discovering this individually as an industry mm-hmm. um, because we're, you know, we have a bunch of people in this industry that care. And, and seeing they're it for our it, own and eyes. And we're seeing, you know, yeah. I think a lot of that, you know, you, and I understand that they're trying to go through, you know, the safety and the trials and all of that. But I mean, once you see these videos with these, these kids mm-hmm. with seizures and, and now they're off all pharmaceuticals and just cannabis oil, and they're like right. completely. It, it, it's it's amazing. It makes me think that maybe these there's too many trials, or I, I don't know. Well, and, well, and you're 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 specifically referencing um, the realm of caring video that was showing um, the two children, Charlotte and Zakai. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, and they're talking about how, you know, they wish they would have found cannabinoids 500,000 seizures ago because they <sighs> measure their lives in seizures. Mm-hmm. And every seizure is more neurons dying, mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. synapses dying. So I think it's a travesty to withhold this kind of medicine. Well, I, I just love that they keep saying, well, it needs more research, it needs more research. Right. It's been around it for 10,000 years. But, I'm not saying it doesn't right. need more research, but... The FDA has, I mean, and I wish I, I, I swear, I wish I, I was past falling asleep on the couch last night and I missed the first like 10 seconds of this commercial for uh, a pharmaceutical that began with X. I can't remember what the hell. They always begin with XPV. Right. <laughs> they, they, they did some weird study, by the way, where XVs and Zs for some reason made people think it worked better. And safer, Oh, too. really? Yeah, that's why. I and was safer. wondering. That's why you see yeah. all of, like Xs, Ps, Vs, and Zs. In medicine names. I don't know why, you know, think about it. When you go through them all, there's a lot of them. Um, But it was hysterical because I didn't pay attention because I was dozing off for the first half, first, literally five seconds of the commercial. Because the first five seconds is what the, what the drug does good for you. And then the rest of the 15 (laughs) seconds of the commercial is every bad effect it has. And I'm listening to this effect and it's like, may cause sudden death, may cause, um, 
uh, what was it? Um, internal bleeding. It may cause, and it went through this whole thing. May give, may give some forms of rare oh, cancer. May, may give this. Death. May give this. May give that. And I'm sitting there going, "What the hell is this drug for? That you're willing to take this right. risk?" And I was like, "I can't think of anything that I would be needing that would be I would be willing to take all this risk right. of like." And it was like I said, it was like 20 seconds of like horrible side effects. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even just may you experience discomfort and nausea. Drowsiness. That I was looking for like, oh, at least it's just <laughs> nausea. No, it yeah. was like some seriously crazy stuff. And I'm like, that passed FDA standards in three years. Yeah. See, cannabis still needs more study for the FDA to approve it. Really, you right. know, it, you know, it's it's just it's absolutely. But it all comes insane. down to money. I mean, it, it all has to come down to money. And of course. it's funny that you said that because they're they're. Um, well, now you your antidepressants not enough. Now you need a Bilify mm-hmm. to help with that. Mm-hmm. But um, there's a I can't remember what the drug was for, but it was something that was an inconvenience. Okay, mm-hmm. it's not something that really makes you sick. And mm-hmm. I can't remember if it was skin. It might have been psoriasis or something. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, yeah. And it was like okay, so you can have psoriasis on your skin, or you can have you know all of these things. And I'm just like. But but everyone watching that is like, oh, that won't happen to me, and you know. Well, there's some. I think it's a hair one. Um, it's another one. It's like more of like the, where it's like you guys, you can grow some hair, but may cause sexual dysfunction. <laughs> right. I, think, yeah. I think that's hysterical. It's like, well, finally, I can pick up women because I'm no longer bald, <laughs> but I can't do anything about it. <laughs> if, you see, if, you see, uh, if you see puberty changes in your children, consult your physician. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like what. No, I know. Well, there are some now, Jen, I don't know if you've heard of it, but there's um, mascaras or uh, kind of nutrient mascara that you can put on your eyelashes that help them grow. Oh, the Lutrice. But it can change your eye color. And when you stop using them, when you stop using it, you get a dark line. And also your eyelashes can start falling out afterwards. Because I don't know if you know this, but there's little microorganisms that Mm -hmm. live in your -hmm. your Your eyelash bulk. And so it actually feeds them is what you're doing, but you're feeding them with kind of an agar petri dish type food. Right. Versus then they won't be able to eat themselves, right? Well, kind of like the the, <laughs> the geese in the park. Well, yeah, I mean it makes sense. It's 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 it's, it's interesting. I was just listening to a, a radio show on my way here and they were of course talking like one of my favorite things to talk about is GMOs, because mm-hmm. especially on the hemp side of things mm-hmm. with the legislation now, that's one of the things I'm seriously talking with the hemp lobbyists about. And I always ask them, like, what are you doing to, to like prevent GMOs from coming into hemp? And hemp is already designed in a way where it doesn't need GMOs, because mm-hmm. GMOs were designed to like, we're, well, you know, we're going to create this pesticide, like accepting seed. Yep, Roundup. Which, yeah, round. Mm-hmm. it's all from Roundup Monsanto. And then, of course, you know, they find that, well, well now we're creating freaky bugs that are immune to that. So we now need to create stronger pesticides. No. And it's, but it's all a cycle of consumerism. I mean, that's what I hear when you say this. Okay, I'm going to give you this thing to make your eyelashes longer. But if you don't, if you stop using this, you're yep. going to lose your eyelashes. You're going to lose your eye color. So now, as soon as you start using it, you have to use this over for and life. over again. Yeah, yep. for life. You know, and everything is designed to be consumed. You know, the drugs. You take this drug, well, you're going to have this side effect. Well, you still need that drug for the first issue, but now you need another drug for this side effect. Right. Nothing is designed to cure anything. Right. It's designed for consuming it. And and that's mm-hmm. and you're going to love this. That's why, um, you know, we do what we do in the hemp connoisseur. I'm trying to tie it back to hemp here. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> um, because hemp is one of those products that can end that cycle. Um, cannabis as a plant is one of the best you know, organic products to end that cycle on both sides, on the pharmaceutical side. But then on the real consumer side, when we're talking about, you know, plastics, oil, fabrics, you know, combating pesticide Mm -hmm. usage, you know, with a plant like hemp that does not require pesticides nearly as much as anything else. Um, In fact, almost no pesticides. Well, almost no pesticides, depending on your region. Well, and you can do it without pesticides, can't Mm -hmm. you? You can. Oh, no, no, absolutely. And most hemp will Mm -hmm. be grown in this country and around the world has been grown without the need for pesticides. Of course, if you're in a specific region, there may be something that could affect it. But the, the normal, the usual suspects of bugs that you're worried about when you're cro- growing a crop, um, hemp actually um, can combat and go against. And the same thing with the weeds that you're usually trying to get rid of when you're a farmer. The hemp chokes out those weeds. So it's, it's a great mm-hmm. rotational crop to allow a farm to go to organic 
um, because they don't have to worry about utilizing any more chemicals or, or other GMOs when they when they crop rotate with hemp. Right. So just that as a basic foundation of utilizing hemp as an mm-hmm. agricultural product is amazing. Doesn't it also kind of clean and replenish the soil? Yes, it does something mm-hmm. called phytoremediation. Mm-hmm. Uh, phytoremediation basically means cleaning your soil. Because um, our soil is completely jacked. Yes. Well, our soil is completely jacked. Uh, more specifically, um, when you look at radiated soil, mm-hmm. um, it was utilized in Chernobyl and in... Uh, radiated soil. Mm-hmm. Yes. What do you mean? Um, so Chernobyl. Yeah. The the nuclear disaster in Chernobyl. Yeah. With, because, that, uh, because of the nuclear leak there, um, all this radiation went into the soil. That soil cannot be utilized mm-hmm. for anything. And in fact, wind patterns over that soil cause a greater instances of cancer in any residential areas in that wind tunnel. We have a, exactly that same issue here in Colorado in an area called Rocky Flats. Um, and if you want, I can talk about that. I know he has to go on a break. So oh, we're going to go on a break and we'll talk about that when we come back. Yeah. Thanks. Blue Sage Microbes unveils the ultimate in superior soil, Ideal Soil, a 16-quart bag of the best growing soil ever engineered. Superior plant health and vitality is a direct result of the structure and chemistry of your soil. How good is your growing soil? Is your growing soil really balanced? How do you know? Well, Blue Sage Microbes has a newly designed growing soil that is the most advanced growing medium ever offered for cannabis cultivation. This is the only brand in the marketplace that provides growers with an ideal soil structure designed to work specifically with their cultivation systems. You will have your best grow results ever. Call now for a special introductory offer, 888-959-8. 551 or log on to bluesagemicrobes.com and experience a new level in growing. That's 888-959-8551. Tired of dispensary hopping? Trying to find quality meds? Look no further and get to know Greenworks. Our shops are stocked with over 20 strains of organically grown meds, including R4, the highest testing CBD strain in Colorado. Yes, we back up our quality with testing. While Greenworks offers only the highest quality meds, we don't believe in high prices, with eighths ranging from $20 to $40 and ounces capped at $175. With two centers in Denver and one in Glenwood Springs, we're likely closer than you think. Call 303-647-5210 to find the location nearest you. Green Faith Ministry is for spiritual guidance, MMJ information, and networking combined with compassionate care on the way to enlightenment with all Green Faith sacraments. Green Faith provides charity assistance, including medical and food throughout the year. Contact them at greenfaithministry.com. Four seconds. (laughs) Chris likes to keep us on our toes. Okay, so... Where you left off? Oh well, we were talking. I was I was comparing Chernobyl and what's happened there, and and just so you know, what they did was they grew hemp there because they realized that hemp soaks those um, those the radiated soil, all the ra- radiation out of the soil. But then, into ha- the isn't that then the- you got to get rid of the plant? Yeah, absolutely. But in it, or, mostly but can't sequesters you- in the roots, though. Yes. But yeah, yeah oh. you're right. Yeah. But but if you're not smoking it or you're making rope, isn't that fine? Um, I, you know, the, the, the I'm going to leave that one up to better, you know, it's one of those things that mm-hmm. requires more study and, you know, because it was done, you know, during the Soviet days, um, a lot mm-hmm. of that information is not as easily accessible as you'd like to see, mm-hmm. but we are doing that mm-hmm. exact same study right now, um, in Colorado. So there's an area in Colorado called Rocky Flats. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people don't know what Rocky mm-hmm. Flats was, but it was basically a nuclear dumping ground. Yeah. It was a place where we dumped nuclear waste. And, um, of course, like Chernobyl, there's greater instances of cancer from anybody who is in that wind pattern that goes over rocky flat soil. So House Bill 1099 was passed in June before Amendment 64 was passed in November. House Bill 1099 was the fighter remediation bill, mm-hmm. and that was designed to um, basically utilize hemp. It was written pretty brilliantly by Jason Love, uh, oh. actually. Um, Shout it, out to Jason. Yeah, it was uh, written... Uh, to kind of, it was written nice and broadly, but it was designed as a research and development um, study for hemp. And the first bill, part of it was phytoremediation of Rocky Flats, utilizing that to help clean out the soil of Rocky Flats. Now, of course, there is the issue of what do you do with the radiation that's in the hemp plant, but it would be, but, right. the, but, but the first still, and foremost, let's get the, get get it the it heck out, out of the soil. soil. And then, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, because otherwise- so it literally it, just 
soaks it up. Soaks it up. Yeah, it's it's literally the most perfect plant in the world for mm-hmm. all of the many uses it has. This is just one thing that it can do. Um, one. It, <laughs> one. One thing that it can do, which is clean out um, contaminants from your soil. It cleans out pesticides from the soil as well. So like I said, to help. Um, now, there's a certain certification to become an organic farmer. You have to not use pesticides for a certain amount of years, and mm-hmm. that, that's not going to change whether you're crop rotating with hemp or not. Mm-hmm. But at the same point, that said, if you are crop rotating with hemp, you could be considered organic, not legally, but faster because it's soaking those pesticides mm-hmm. out of the soil faster um, than if you just like stop using pesticides for a certain period of time. It's actually accelerating that. That's incredible. Uh, but that, like I said, that's just one usage. And the phytoremediation <clears throat> bill was passed to not just study that, but also study other aspects that we can utilize mm-hmm. hemp for to start creating that um, uh, seed bank. Um, for hemp and to figure out what grows best in Colorado because we've pretty much we've been kind of screwed here in Colorado excuse my language but uh, 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 that's okay that was okay I can say screwed (laughs) everyone Um, gives me crap about all this (laughs) but but, um, (laughs) because uh, we have destroyed all of our feral hemp over the years Um, places like Kentucky still have it growing immensely well I mean it's I mean still getting cut down they've lost a lot of it but we don't really have any, I mean, I'm sure there's like maybe 1% of the feral hemp or less than 1% that was in Colorado is still here. Um, so we don't have the exact like seeds that have been growing, the heirloom seeds mm-hmm. for Colorado hemp. So we're kind of developing what's going to grow best here, how are we going to do that? And then we're going to have to develop a whole new uh, cultivar for Colorado mm-hmm. hemp. Um, so that's what 1099 was one of the parts of 1099 was to help create. Um, and it was written so brilliantly and broad that that wasn't really written into the bill, but it didn't say that wasn't going to happen. And so they were doing that. And then, of course, now, because of 64 passing, we have the first um, two commercial farmers um, to plant seeds just a few weeks ago. Oh, really? Plant. Yes. Is, um, is there a uh, limitation on THC percentage? I... Yes. To be considered hemp, it has to have mm-hmm. less, um, it has to have at 0.3% mm-hmm. THC or less. Right. But I, I heard in Colorado, just because of our elevation and our weather, um, that our cannabinoid level is higher. So, I mean, so we don't have any hemp right now to test and see if that's true. Well, what we have is we have um, some seeds from what we'd like to call in uh, the seed fairy because (laughs) you can't legally get hemp seeds that are unprocessed in Mm -hmm. the United States to cross state lines, even though we can legally grow hemp in Colorado as a state. Um, And we are the only state, by the way, that has – I mean, there are other states that have legalized hemp production – Washington did the same thing um, in November, Mm -hmm. but all of the other states have done it with this little caveat. And that caveat is we are legalizing hemp and we will grow hemp as soon as the federal government says it's okay. Uh, Colorado, we pretty much just flipped the bird to the government, the federal government, and said, we're going to do it whether you say it's okay or not. And that's one of the things I love about Colorado. (laughs) I love it. Well, you know, if we don't do it, some, you know, what's going to happen? Yeah. Um, So. That, that's one of the aspects for here is, you know, we are developing that right now. Um, you're, you're right. I mean, we don't, we don't know, but the hemp that we do have is already less than, you know, it's 0.3% or less mm-hmm. THC. So we're starting with that base. Now gotcha. we'll see if THC develops. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to leave that up to the horticulturists and the farmers out there mm-hmm. who, and, you know, and the scientists who are studying this. Right. Uh, but I, I'd be surprised. I mean, they're doing it in a controlled environment and then we have the farms that are doing it, but um, I don't foresee a huge issue on the, on that. Right. I mean, if they increase THC levels, it'll be kind of like, wow, that's pretty impressive right. actually that you guys did that <laughs> without meaning to. You know, obviously they don't want to do that. Um, but it's going to be interesting. I mean, we're talking about a huge industry. Um, the marijuana industry has been awesome for Colorado. It's mm-hmm. been awesome for every other state that's legalized it. It is nothing compared to what the hemp industry can do, though. Um, it just, oh, yeah. It's Absolutely. just the hemp industry is a larger machine. Mm-hmm. It's a larger machine that's going to take more investment, more um, more poten- more momentum to build up before it really, like, explodes. Um, it's much easier to grow six plants or a few plants and right. turn it into medicine right away without refining it with with the marijuana side. But and I know that the point three uh, is to ship. So I'm on, I don't know, hmm? Arizona Industrial Hemp Council, mm-hmm. and it says that 
Industrial hemp is generally defined as having less than 1% THC, and mm-hmm. the normal range is under 0.5%. Mm-hmm. Yes. These THC levels are so low that no one could get high from smoking it. No, and that's still a big concern on the hemp side, which is kind of a joke. It's one of the DEA's fake I call it fake. Of course, they wouldn't say that, but it's one of their fake concerns on the hemp side is that you would, uh, you know, if we allow people to grow hemp, they can hide their marijuana in the hemp. That's what I read. I just read that and I was going to say that. That is really it's 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 actually the dumbest thing ever. So oh. like let's let's just we let's Press anybody out there who's listening, right? we're gonna put that myth to rest right now. Yes. If you grow hemp in the same field as you grow marijuana, you are destroying both crops. Absolutely. What happens is the hemp becomes has more THC and is cross pollinated. Mm-hmm. The marijuana gets cross pollinated with hemp and becomes weaker and weaker. There is no black market, legal market. Um, grower in the world that would ever want hemp to be anywhere near their marijuana plants. So how are they going to regulate that here in Colorado? Because I know people are afraid of that. Um, well, the, the regulation, first of all, the way it's going to happen here in Colorado is um, you, you, first of all, you know, right now, it's actually, it's funny. Right now, in a way, in a sense, hemp is actually more regulated than Cannabis and less regu- the marijuana and less regulated at the same time. The way the way it's more regulated is, is that essentially you and I cannot grow hemp out of our home unless we want to tell the DEA, give them GPS coordinates of our house. You know, tell the federal government, the, the Department of Agriculture, hemp, hemp. Okay, you would, yeah. Now legally, because of Amendment right. sixty four, we can grow six plants of marijuana, but. We, you know, but the point is, you're not going to really want to grow the hemp because um, that makes sense. Right. You well, heard it here. <laughs> well, the the big reason is though, you, you you know, they they're trying to say, okay, look, this is an agricultural product. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, yes, I can grow tomatoes, and we talked about this. We had Samantha Walsh on our show last week, um, who's like the the chief hemp lobbyist in Colorado. She's awesome. She's going to become my co-host, by the way. <laughs> oh, um, really? Yes. That's cool. And. Um, I actually met her two weeks ago. Yeah, she's amazing. Ago. She's amazing. That's great. Um, but, uh, you know, we'd love to get it to the point like any other crop. I can grow tomatoes. I'm growing tomatoes in my house right now. I didn't have to report to anybody that I'm growing tomatoes. <laughs> I'm doing it myself. But you might make some killer rope with I your might hemp. make some killer rope with my hemp. <laughs> well, and that's the issue, though. A lot of people have asked me this. Hey, can I grow some hemp right now? Yeah, I mean, if you want, where are you going to get the seeds? I don't know. Um, mm. But even if you grew the hemp, what are you going to do with it? You know, it's not like right. marijuana. You can't just take a butt off, you know, dry it up and then smoke it. You've got to do something with it. Mm-hmm. You can't, you know, you got to, you know, you got to press, press the oil. You got to process it. You got to do things with it. And, you, and nobody has those facilities yet. It'd be great to see down the line mm-hmm. that there's maybe a plant that you can go and say, okay, here's my hemp product. Can you, you know, can you process my seeds for me and I can sell it at a farmer's market? We'd love right. to see that happen. How do you make it into protein? Um, there's actually a couple of different processes to, to make hemp into protein, actually. Um, basically, the, first of all, the seed itself has the protein in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is actually one of the best vegetable proteins out there. It has ex- right. absolutely no known allergen. I'm so sure do they grind up because I have hemp protein at home. I'm there's there's different. Th- that's what I believe what that's called is the cake side mm-hmm. of it. So what, during the process, seed. yeah, during the process of pressing the hemp seed, you have oil. That can mm-hmm. come out of that. Mm-hmm. Now you can make you can use that hemp oil and turn that into protein. You can make it into you know there's a part of that that's a waste that becomes the cake that you mm-hmm. know the powder form that becomes the protein powder. Oh. Usually that's what becomes your protein powder. Okay. Um, and that's what's amazing is throughout the entire processing of the hemp plant, nothing. There's no waste. There nothing wow. needs to go so to waste. Yes. So where, what is the root waste. and stems and okay. what do they do? So. And it's funny because each country or each region of the world that grows hemp kind of has a different focus on mm-hmm. the hemp plant. And that's where I really? love that's what I love is when the United States gets in there, I think we're gonna take it. <laughs> we're gonna focus on everything. So but all right, so you have the seed, which is mm-hmm. protein. It's um, hemp seed oil. It's and in fact, you know, one of the most common uses of hemp seed right now, besides the protein and the hemp seed oil, is actually bird birds, feed. Yeah, bird bird seed. seed. Really? Yeah, it's one of the best 
uh, parts of bird seed for it's feeding. funny because they've actually done studies where they, they'll watch the birds and they pick out the hemp seeds mm-hmm. before the other because it's better nutrition really animals know <laughs> what the know best that. nutritional source is and here is. we are going to Burger King yeah <laughs> woo yeah Sorry. and still focused on I mean <laughs> thankfully soy is kind of on a downturn mm-hmm. Uh, but soy is soy horrible. Soy will give you boobs. Soy I've will heard. give a guy boobs. Yeah, no, no, I've heard that as well. But um, <laughs> but hemp is well, hemp. I'm not going to. We try can it. differentiate GMO soy versus. Yes, you can. You yeah, can. Yeah, I know. I'm just kidding. Um, if it gave I'm you Asian. boobs, I'd right. be all over it. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! So you have the, so you have okay. So there's usage out of the the hemp seed. The you know okay. hulled hemp seeds are great. They mm-hmm. got a nice nutty flavor to them. Okay. All right. Okay. Just ignore gonna, Chris for a minute. I'm, I'm going to ignore Chris because this <laughs> could go for a, this could go him. for a minute if you want. Okay. All right. But okay. So let me just talk about the seed, and then we can talk about the rest of the plant, I guess, after the break because it takes okay. a little while. Um, so you have the hemp seed where you can make the oil. You can eat the seeds, which have a wonderful nutty flavor and are packed with protein and energy, which is awesome. I use mm-hmm. like a little two tablespoons of this hemp seed, flax Hem- seed, do they chia, call them hemp hearts, chia seeds, hemp hearts. Yeah. Okay. And okay. you can just sprinkle those in your salads, and it adds an awesome texture and flavor mm-hmm. to oh, any meal. salad you make. Yep. Yeah. Um, I used a couple tablespoons of this mixture that's hemp seed and chia and uh, flaxseed, uh, two tablespoons mm-hmm. on a good cereal, and it just like makes it so much better because uh, you're adding protein to your cereal. It's so the much. Seeds are so good. They're for you. so good for you. Chia. Um, yep. Um, now, also, this hemp seed oil could be turned into biodiesel, mm-hmm. but there's yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Right there's here, right other here. methods mm-hmm. of making biodiesel besides the hemp seed oil, and in fact, it's not actually viable to make the hemp seed oil into biodiesel because it would take so many seeds to be pressed to turn it into the amount of biodiesel mm-hmm. you would want to use. Okay. So what's going to end up happening is the waste of the hulls and the f- and the fibers from the that cellulose, from the cellulose right, right, right. will okay. be turned into the biodiesel down the line. Um, and then you have, of course, you know, like I said, you have the uh, the um, fibers from the outside of the hull. Mm-hmm. That's best for fabrics, uh, textiles, okay. um, and hemp as a fabric is superior to cotton. Cotton, by the way, two thirds of the world's pesticides are utilized for cotton alone. Wow, really? Two thirds. Um, because mm. cotton is such a weak crop mm-hmm. when it comes to pests and you know and dealing with that, so they need so many chemicals to make it. So organic cotton, which this shirt is hemp and organic cotton I'm wearing, is not easy to find. It's mm-hmm. out there, but it's I didn't it's, know. Wow, I just it's put hard that to together. Yeah, I didn't know that. All right, we got to go to break. Yep. We'll be right back. Okay. Ivita Wellness is committed to compassionate patient care while providing the highest quality medicine at an affordable price. At Ivita Wellness, patients can get top shelf ounces for $150 every day. Ivita Wellness also carries pharmaceutical grade pure CO2 oil. Ivita Wellness is located in Uptown Denver on 1616 Pearl Street. Open seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can reach us at 303 303- 952-9150 or our website at www.ivitawellness.com Ivita Wellness is Denver's Compassionate Care Center. This segment was brought to you by The Farm, a medical marijuana care center located at 2801 Iris Street in Boulder. The Farm carries premium cannabis, edibles, and hummingbird brand products. Visit our new cannabis lifestyle store for your local artesian glass, vaporizers, and hemp clothing. The Farm has been serving Boulder since 2009. Isn't it time you come and see what we have to offer? Interested in the amazing benefits of CBD? Check out Dixie X Hemp CBD Wellness Products at www.dixiex.com. The National Cannabis Industry Association would like to thank its members who represent the leading professional businesses in America's emerging legal cannabis market. NCIA is the only organization that has unified legitimate cannabis business across the nation to fight for real reform in Washington, D.C. For more information or to make your business a member, visit us online at thecannabisindustry.org. We got six seconds this time. Six seconds. <laughs> six seconds. So, so let's um, let me go back to where you said. Uh, mm-hmm. So, food, mm-hmm. hemp seed can be pressed into a, a nutritious oil, which mm-hmm. contains the highest amount of fatty acids in the plant kingdom. Yep, it's one of the most. It's the best essential nutrient out there. It's essential incredible. oils are responsible for our immune system responses and to clear the arteries of cholesterol mm-hmm. and, and, and actually, plaque. I have to cut you off there. Mm-hmm. So those essential fatty acids do that 
through the endocannabinoid system. Yes, they do. So uh, essential fatty acids, uh, omega-3, omega-6, they're precursors to the endocannabinoids, and they also help your receptors work better. Mm -hmm. What we need to do, because I know it's hard for people to visualize this when we're talking about it, we need to put a diagram together to Mm -hmm. kind of show so we can post it up Mm -hmm. and people can look at it. And, you know, if you want to read about the endocannabinoid system, we actually did an article on the endocannabinoid system in our last issue of the magazine. Oh, perfect. I was very Um, excited about that. Can they see it online, the hemp Yeah, you can see all of those issues are free to see online or on our app for uh you can just go to the hemp connoisseur app on iphone or droid and all that okay so wait hold on so let me let's see the byproduct depressing the oil from hemp seed is high quality protein mm-hmm. seed cake mm-hmm. it can be sprouted malted ground and baked into cake spreads and casseroles mm-hmm. hemp seed protein is one of ma- mankind's finest and most <laughs> complete and available to the body which is very important Vegetable proteins. Yes. Wow, that is pretty mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so go go ahead. So what were what the were rest of the hemp plant? Yeah. Kind of break. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, uh, first, like, let me preface. There's twenty five thousand plus mm-hmm. uses to hemp. Oh, gee, my um, but I'm I'm kind of kind of talking about the root uses. Okay. Um, now, when we talk about, like, I talked about the you know textile. As far as textiles, hemp is. First of all, like I said, antimicrobial, which is amazing. Like I, I only wear hemp now as a T-shirt. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have some non-hemp T-shirts, and every time I wear them, I'm like, oh my god, it's so hot. Because really? I'm so used to these breathe better. Um, when you sweat, um, you don't. Your shirt does not stink. It actually does not stink. Hemp socks, most amazing thing ever. Really? Seriously. Um, you may hmm. smell, but your shirt won't. You know? I don't smell, well, but similarly, you know. Similarly with hempcrete too, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, that anti. I'm so glad you mentioned hempcrete. Hemp what? Hempcrete. Hempcrete. hempcrete, like concrete. Think concrete. Oh, hempcrete. Hempcrete. So okay. it's. Yeah, you, what they do is they take the fibers or the herds mm-hmm. and and because the herd is the the meat of the stock, mm-hmm. um, that's actually used more. Like I, I was mentioning in the break, to, for animal bedding is a great right. immediate usage mm-hmm. for the herds, but also utilizing it for hempcrete and insulation. Mm-hmm. Wow, because um, hemp is mold resistant, mm-hmm. very mold resistant. Why? Why is it? What mo- is the what you is know, the science be- I, behind that? What? I know. Okay, go ahead. Because when they look at it under a microscope, mm-hmm. it looks like really spiny so yes. nothing that's able to attach oh well, so the molecules too you know cannabinoids terpenoids they have antimicrobial antifungal yep. antiviral yep. antibacterial so then how does e coli uh, find how do we find that in cannabis how do we find it in cannabis right. oh that's from the that's, soil and and right. also like runoff water you know yep. similarly to okay. Um, you know, spinach that was yeah, infected. cross contamination. Mm-hmm, exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's not the hemp that's creating E. coli. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I mean, because E. coli is not from washing a... the trimmers' hands or or exactly. crap in soil exactly. and all yeah, of that exactly. kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah. So Chris behind the scenes was telling us that um, it's antimicrobial and and mold and stuff mm-hmm. is because it's like spiny. And mm-hmm. It is. It, well, it is still. It's the. I, I'd like to say it's the strongest natural fiber known to man. I don't know if there's one that's considered stronger. Um, Isn't it stronger than steel? In a in a way. I mean, you know, not in the way that you would traditionally think it's stronger mm-hmm. than steel. When you take a hemp um, biocomposite and you and you you can make it into something like Henry Ford Hemp Car is one of the most famous videos of that, where he created a composite hemp frame for the Model T, mm-hmm. and it was stronger really? than it was lighter and stronger than steel. Anybody can YouTube Henry Ford Hemp Car. Mm-hmm. And there's a video, it's a short, like, two-second video, basically, or whatever, of Henry Ford himself with an axe swinging it at the back of the trunk of this Model T made from hemp. (laughs) And the axe is literally bouncing off of the car... And it's still maintaining its shape. In 1941. I'm going to have to okay. show that to my brother. I'm going to have Chris yeah. um, post that post on iCannabis Radio. He, um, my brother, actually, he works for a composite company building parts for uh, planes mm-hmm. and high-end cars. And the last time he was visiting, I was suggesting using hemp for his composite. Mm-hmm. So Lotus does it. Mm-hmm. BMW mm-hmm. and Mercedes are all doing it. I mean, when you're looking at the cutting-edge car companies, they're looking at ways to... Um, make their cars stronger and right. lighter right. to make them more fuel efficient. And hemp is where they're all looking mm-hmm. at because, and it's funny that it's like, we've had to add this cycle. I mean, imagine if we had been having this since 1941 when Henry right. Ford first envisioned this. If we, I mean, imagine the hemp technology we'd have right now if we were using it to its fullest. Every car would be made from hemp because right now the lighter fabrics and ways that we can make the plastics um, with hemp 
Um, the Kestrel car we featured a couple issues ago um, by Motive Industries is a concept car completely made out of hemp. Oh. Um, and uh, it <laughs> retains its shape. You can like again, like the Henry Ford car, you can That's put awesome. a dent in it, and it and it retains its shape. It has like almost like has. Excuse me. It has like memory of of where it's supposed to be, and it bounces very back. Sa- safe too for collisions. And- yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, one of the things that's most exciting for me on the hemp side is not the actually the hemp biodiesel. Um, everybody, you know, we did feature it on a cover, and actually that cover went viral more than anything else by creating this yeah, hemp biodiesel cool. um, gas station. And of course, nobody gave us credit for it. They cut out our name and just showed this gas station. <laughs> mm-hmm. we like, all hey, knew, wait a minute. We all knew. Everybody in Colorado knew about it. The rest of the world <laughs> didn't, but it, it did. It really went international. Um, but uh, it's much harder to get to the hemp biodiesel, like I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. But about 50% of our crude oil in this country goes to make plastic. Um, we can make anything that's made out of plastic from hemp cellulose. And if you think about it, that anything includes medical instruments because they're antimicrobial, antiviral, See, antibiotic. It's amazing, amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. <laughs> it all it all connects to everything. And, and so, um, yeah, you're now saying that if we mass produce hemp, and we wouldn't even probably have to subsidize it like we do corn, but even if we did subsidize mm-hmm. it like we do corn just to get it up and running, we're talking about the ability – in about, you know, 20 years Mm -hmm. to eliminate 50% of our need for crude oil. (sighs) Nothing else has been shown to show that type of potential. Right. So, and for the people that don't know out there, why why haven't we used hemp, Dave? (laughs) Tell me about that 80-year propaganda. Well, it's it's funny. I mean, anybody might have, who's worn hemp or wearing those clothes, um, um, probably has, knows this answer too. But, um, it, you know, the reason for marijuana prohibition, in my opinion, has never been about the drug marijuana, um, which is a made-up name, and I hate that name, but I have to differentiate it between hemp nowadays so people understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was really because of the uh, ability for hemp to cross over and take over for so many other markets. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you look at uh, DuPont Chemicals, they were just developing this new nylon that was coming out, you know, plastics, and they were developing mm-hmm. that right around this time. At the same time, you had William Randolph Hearst, who had expanded so much investment in the timber industry to print all of the newspapers he had. I mean, you're talking about this was like the media mogul of the time. William, I mean, Citizen Kane is, the, you know, the story about him and all that. Very eccentric guy. And then you have also the oil conglomerates and Rockefellers. Um and all those guys. I mean, gas, I mean, a lot of people don't realize was just a usage. It's a byproduct of oil. Mm-hmm. So they basically convinced us all to pay a lot of money for their waste, for refining the oil, to make the plastics and all these other products. Well, hemp was just taking a reemergence because it was so expensive. Um, they didn't have a good industrial complex to take the hemp and turn it into the fabric that they used to do. It was actually the hardest, it was considered the hardest job in the world was breaking down the hemp. And if you go into bold black and white video and you see these guys trying to break down the hemp because it's such a strong fiber, Mm -hmm. it was like considered this back-breaking work um, because there was no industry created to do it. Now, the cotton gin came about, and all of a sudden it was this really cheap way to make this fabric, which was great. That's what industry does. But then hemp, they found a way to break down and do that with hemp. And all of a sudden it was like, wait a minute, hemp can take back over. <laughs> and then they started looking at, oh, wait, Henry Ford is going to be able to make biodiesel, and he's making all these composites, and he could, they can take over for a nylon. And wait a minute, we can make fuel out of this? Uh-huh. Well, if we can make, because the diesel, diesel, the, the, I always forget his first name, but that's how the diesel engine and diesel fuel was created. The diesel fuel was created not to be made from oil. It was made to, it was created to be taken as biodiesel from the beginning. Every fruit, vegetable, all the waste that we have of food could be mm-hmm. turned into diesel. Hemp being one of those. Really? Yeah, it's just fermentation process. Mm-hmm. It's alcohol. That's what it is. It's huh. just turning into fermentation. Methanol, yeah. Methanol. Yeah. Yeah, there's two ways you can turn it into methanol Some of these or, things or just don't, ethanol. you know, pop up when I think about stuff. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's it's so I mean seriously. So that that's so all these, you know, the diesel engine was created to take the waste of our agriculture and turn it into our fuel. Awesome. Closed loop system, yeah. great, brilliant. Well, that doesn't sit very well for the oil guys because think about it. Anybody can grow crops. Not anybody can dig and drill for oil. 
So you're controlling a resource that everybody right. needs. And so that was how this whole campaign against hemp happened. I mean, hemp again, replacing the timber industry. So William Randolph Hearst, he was in the perfect position for this reefer madness campaign to create it. Sure. Because he didn't want to lose his timber holdings. Um, so they created this smear campaign with um, Henry Anslinger at the top of it, but Randolph Hearst was really the one behind it. And they created all these fake stories about this illicit drug called marijuana, which nobody had ever heard of. They knew what cannabis was. In they 1930, knew, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. They had heard of hemp, you know, and hemp farmers, I mean, it was considered this amazing crop and hemp farmers. And then they hear about this drug for about two year campaign, this marijuana drug, which was making white women want to sleep with black men, which of course <laughs> in the 1930s is just unheard of. Oh my God, of. right. Um, <laughs> And um, it was making people violent, which... Really? Can, Where yeah. can I buy some? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and uh, so all these people were like, oh, well, yeah, we got to get rid of this thing, marijuana. This sounds terrible. And like right around like the 30th or 60 days before this bill was finally passed, they found out, wait a minute, you, you, wait, the farmers were like, you're talking about cannabis? You're talking about hemp? Well, we're, it's not addictive. Our, our, our work can smoke hemp. You know, not hemp. You know, they mm -hmm. called everything hemp, by mm -hmm. the way. So it's like this weird change that's happened. But, um, you know, there was medical hemp or and there was industrial mm -hmm. hemp or there was medical cannabis and industrial cannabis. And then it's now it's been this division. But um, they were just like, that's not what we know about cannabis. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was too late. It was like the final hour when everybody found out what the smear campaign was about. So it was like I just made up a name. Of, of some new thing, and that's what marijuana was. It was this pretty much made-up name from, it came from a um, lyric in a Mexican song. You know, and it's kind of interesting because it just shows the, um, the power of thought, yes. right? Because we create marijuana, and hemp and cannabis were all one thing. Yeah. With years and years of different types of breeding, now we mm -hmm. actually do have more of a distinction between mm -hmm. marijuana and hemp yeah. because of the cannabinoid levels. By the way, that's mm -hmm. only in North America. Mm -hmm. In Europe, it's all cannabis. Yes, they call it marijuana, they call it hemp, but they understand when somebody says cannabis, it could mean one or the other. Right. And so that's, that's funny because I call marijuana cannabis. I right? call marijuana mm -hmm. cannabis, yeah. but I call hemp cannabis as well. And that confuses people. Mm -hmm. So I always have to say industrial cannabis. And they're like, well, what the hell does that mean? And then right. I have to say right. hemp. <laughs> but it's kind of like the re education. Right. It's like Absolutely. where I'm trying to like backtrack, you know, mm -hmm. um, what, 90 plus years or whatever, 80 years now, I guess, of um, misinformation. Mm -hmm. I know. just can't. Oh, you know, it's really scary. And I thought about it a lot over the weekend about how we have literally been so brainwashed mm -hmm. that people would rather. I mean, and even I catch myself doing it, too. You know, like, oh, well, I'll have I'll have an aspirin instead of, you know, having some cannabis like mm -hmm. I, I fight with it every day. I mean, mm -hmm. it's 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 truly um, and it's about everything. I mean, look at the politics. Look at mm -hmm. the banks. Well, look we're at, in it right now. We're brainwashed. Like, mm -hmm. oh my god, it's just unbelievable. All right. Well, Chris is giving me the stink eye. We'll oh. go to break. <laughs> oh, this is the end of the oh, show. It is? Oh my god, and I oh, have to go too, which is that terrible. Flew by. It did flew, fly, flew, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I hope to be on Dave's so show soon. We would love to have you. And next week we're having Jeffrey Raber from the workshop, which oh. is a fantastic. Stick, a fabulous lab mm -hmm. in California. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about his recent publication about um, inhaling pesticides. So, Ooh, wow. Please well, tune in. Excellent. And the Hemp Connoisseur Radio will be off this week. Okay. Because I will be in court. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but <laughs> doing good things. Well, yeah, we're suing the government for violation of freedom of speech. What's that? No. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a rerun though. We'll so you can definitely listen to that. <laughs> um, and you know what? You should rerun the uh, Bongathon one because that was fun. <laughs> and as always, thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next week.